Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jonathan and Keith here for The Integrated Entrepreneur. On the last show, we mentioned that, hey, how to grow your business, the hustler has to die for the CEO to be born. Well, one of the biggest parts of that is simple. It's hiring, right? You need to be able to hire those people. You need to be able to hire the right way. You need to be able to incorporate a lot of different things that if you mess up in this process, um, that, that your hires are not going to work out and you're just going to waste and light up a, a bunch of money on fire. That's the last thing we want for you guys. So right. instead of doing what we were going to plan to do today, Keith had the ge genius idea is, Hey, the next thing they do after they, you know, start documenting everything is hiring. So let's go into it. So happy to do that. Keith, why don't you start off with some of the things people need to consider when they're hiring? Yeah, I think the first and foremost is like once you understand, you know, what the vision is of your business in general, whether you're trying to scale this damn thing and, and sell it, you know, in 10 years for 100 million or if you just need some some seasonal help, you got to identify what you're hiring for. Right. And then once we identify if it's a long term hire, short term hire, seasonal hire, or if it's an executive assistant versus your integrator or COO, then we can understand where to go look in those pools for uh, good talent. And <clears throat> so I think masking out or, or doing some meditation, some vision board on who that person is, what they need to be capable of, and kind of setting some parameters in your mind of what boxes they need to check, then we can start searching for that person. It's kind of like a house. You don't just go look at three houses and decide to buy one of the three. You know, it's got to face the north and it needs to have a pool in the backyard and it needs to have rooms on opposite. You know, there's there's things yep. you're looking for and you can don't go buy a house until you find it. Can I add? Well, the same thing is true to, to your to your who do, who do we need to hire first and foremost is you got to understand what that person needs to look like before mm -hmm. we can even go into the route of hiring. So that that's first. What, what would you agree with that or? I, I would. And here, here's what I would do. If you don't have a mission statement if you don't and you more importantly you don't have core values it's very hard to hire okay because all your decisions in your company need to be based on your core values all right i'm not saying anyone you hire has to be able to list every core value and say that's one of theirs but it is something that as you're going through and reviewing candidates you want one you want them to know and two you want to see what their core values are you want to see what they've done to improve themselves. You want to see what experience they have. And before you can even start looking at people, you have to know what questions to ask when you're trying to post something. So what I would say is the starting line is have your core values, number one. Number two, you should have that position documented and video, meaning someone can come in when they come in that day, go through a little bit of training and say, yes, this is for me or no, it isn't for me. All right. And then that's when you can actually start posting and using some of the tools we'll give you. All right. But before you actually have it documented, written out one, what you expect from them two, your core values and three, a training for them, you shouldn't be hiring because then you're just doing shit on the fly that will never work out. All right. So I would say that is a true step one. Know who you are, know what you stand for, know what you're against, okay, and have that position all documented and having a training program in place for it. And then you can go and reverse engineer using that training and the skills that they need, reverse engineer a job posting, all right? People will work for recognition just as much as they'll work for money. All right. And people want to be with companies that are winners. All right. If you can say, hey, this is our goal. This is our big vision. This is how you fit in. People are going to be excited and get up to do that. Whereas if you just say, hey, this position starts at $50,000 a year, uh, apply here. Well, then you're only going to get people that only want $50,000 a year. I don't think you want to hire someone that just wants $50,000 a year. I don't give a shit. What no, position. they're asking to leave them. Yeah. They're yeah, leaving for sixty thousand a year in the next the next job posting. Correct. So, yeah, I mean, and this is this this is the fucking worst part of business ownership for me. I fucking hate it. 
I do and too. the reality is this. I hate it because I'm not good at it. So I had to learn early on to delegate the hiring process to other people. Right. I did the same fucking thing, dude. It just, it, it, and half the people listening to us will end up doing the same shit too, because it's, it is a time suck. And it's, it's the fucking worst when you pour into someone for six months and then they're like, yeah, fuck you. I'm out. Quit. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So show us all this coming. So I think, you know, the quicker you can do that now, listen, hiring on the front end of your business, dude, you're going to hire your friend. You're going to hire your friend's wife to answer the phones. You're going to hire those minuscule tasks and shit like that off. And I'm not talking about, these aren't the, the hires that I'm talking about. Those come and go a dime a dozen and literally, uh, it just sucks because people will fucking get burned out in those roles. But I'm talking about the C-level suite roles, the people that you want to actually pour into, make sure that they're a culture fit, right? Don't hire them based on what they can do for you. Hire them based on who they are, right? Because you can always help mold culture and expectations. You can never mold someone being a self-starter and a go-getter and not lazy. And I don't know how many times a week I mention the word of like, hey, self-promote your activity. Like, I need you to come to me with shit that I'm not ready for you to do yet. Yeah. Right? Because that's why I know that your ass is ahead of the game and you're looking for the next thing to do. You're not just, oh, that task is done and you're now you're on TikTok waiting for me to send you another task to do. And those people are okay. You just got to know who they are and put them in the right role. Otherwise, you're doing your job and their job and you ain't getting shit done. Mm-hmm. And right? and so the simple sweet people... In my opinion, I hire based on character versus capability because I can always coach capability. I can never coach character. And if you're building something that is value driven and culture driven and and you have impact on other people, then you have to hire character first. I can send you to all the trainings in the world. I can get you trained up. Right. That's just a little bit of money and me sending you somewhere. Yep. I can't teach you how to say thank you, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and be a decent fucking human being. Yep. You either are or you aren't. So that's my thing is I look at character first, then I look at capabilities. And I also don't demote. Because I've never heard of a situation where you don't demote without firing someone. I agree with that. You you demote them today in six months, they're fired. Yep. Right? It just is what it is. So when you're thinking of hiring, I always think long-term role player, but I think short-term cost, right? Have you ever thought about that when you talk to people like, oh man, this hire is going to cost me 150000 a year. And I'm like, no, it's going to cost you three months of that salary because if they are not the right person, it's your job to get them out of that role in three months. Yep. So it's a three-month commitment. So that helped me out a lot higher in my first couple C suites where you're like, dude, this is a this is a 150 to 250 type role. Holy shit. Yep. But the reality is it's not. It's a three month commitment and you should know very well within that 90 day cycle if they're the right candidate. Yep. Right? I, I agree with that. I, I also think from a tactical level, um, that is the right way to think about it but there's a lot more that goes into it, right? Once you okay. know you have the right person, well, uh, wait, let's talk, let's back it up a step. Like, where did you find them? Okay, yeah. I'll give you what I use personally and what, what I like. The best hiring platform I've ever seen, and you can, I have have yet to find a position that I could not fill with this, but I'm sure there are, is, is, a, is a little thing called Wise Hire, okay? W-I-Z-E, Hire. And the reason I like it so much is it posts on every job board in your area. So you're omnipresent, number one. Number two, if you set it up properly, it will give your candidates things that they have to do besides hitting the apply button, meaning they'll send them a disk profile uh, assessment. By the way, that test in and of itself, if if you had two candidates do that, it's already going to be a break even for the monthly cost of wise hire and it's way cheaper than indeed and gets way better results than it. Okay. So what we do is we make each candidate go through several tasks to make sure that they can actually listen to instructions 
and it shows who wants a job and who's just actively shotgunning their application out to anybody that'll hire them. All right. The people that are shotgunning their application out and that don't complete any of the other tests are out. I don't even, no one gets on the phone with them. Not the people in charge of my company and hiring and certainly not me. Okay. Uh, it could also do background checks and a bunch of other things for you. So as all these things are happening and you give them specific instructions that they have to follow towards the end, you're going to see if they're fit for that position based on their disk profile and whatever else they had to do. At that point, someone from my company will reach out. And if they like them, they think they're a culture fit and they interview well, then they will set them up on my calendar. So before I speak to any candidates, they've already not just applied, but they've filled out a disk profile test and a bunch of other things that we make them do. And then they interview with somebody else at my company. So I know my time is not being wasted when I actually get on a call with somebody. And by the way, by, I should have about a, a 50% or more uh, hiring rate if I'm getting on the phone with them based on how many things that they've done to that point. Okay. Yeah. Super easy to set up, super simple. You just probably have to take two to three hours, get it set up for your company, have a company profile on there, and then just understand the right type of job posting. That yeah. is key because Keith, you don't like doing it. I don't like doing it. Guess what? I still have input on who we hire and if I like them or not. But for the most part, I don't have to sift through application after application after application before I find somebody that may be a fit. Yeah. That's why I'm heavy on character. I'm heavy on character because I've done well at the culture and, and my people will run those people off for me because they are, Hey boss, this, this person's just not the right fit. Hey, this individual ain't going to cut it. And I, I most of the time don't even have to get involved, which is great, but that's because I've hired on character and culture fits more so than I hired on the ability for this individual to do the task at a hundred percent of what I could, if they can do 60% without any coaching and molding and teaching, I'll put the resources behind them to get them to 85, 80 to 90%, right? Or 85%, whatever it might be. And I'm good with that, right? Because two things happen. One, they're a great fit. Everyone gets along with them. They know what we're about. They, they live by our core values, right? They, they, the things that are important to us are important to them. Yeah. Getting them to do the actual task the way it needs to be done is, is the easy part. It's always been the easy part, in my opinion. But I think a lot of people hire in reverse of that, of like, man, you have to be able to do 95% of what I can do or you're fucking out of here. Well, yeah, no one's ever going to get remotely close to us. Why? We're alpha males. We're egotistical. We're assholes. That's that's what entrepreneurs are, it's male true. and female, right? We we're, we're, don't get in our fucking way. This is our baby. We know exactly what's going on. The reality is... That shit's teachable to anybody. Yeah. We just took forever to learn it. <laughs> so yeah. if I can use my resources wisely and I can hire people that I know are a great fit, can add value in the culture, well, it's just a matter of getting them to the right level of education in the, in the process of what we need them to do. Mm -hmm. And then we pour into them by that. They're grateful. They pour back into us. And then ultimately we, what will start to happen is your people will hire for you and you won't need wise hire or these third party opportunities on your balance sheet anymore. You won't have to pay for it. Yep. So, and that's kind of where we're getting to now. We're getting to where like, Hey man, I heard about what you're doing. I would love to come over and check it out. Yep. See if there's an opportunity. And that's pretty cool. when that shit starts happening. Cause then you're like, Oh, all this fucking crying and nightmares and heartache has been worth it. Great. I'm glad it took 14 years. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> so. We're trying to teach you men and women out there how to do this shit a lot quicker and, and, and more simplistic than uh, than we did it. But, dude, you're an overnight success, so what do you mean? Yeah, exactly. F 15 years of overnight success. 100%. Overnight. <laughs> over and over years. and over again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. So I think hiring, I used, you know, backing up, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud here from like when, an affordability perspective, depending on where people are in their journey, 
LinkedIn was a great resource for me, just posting on my own. But what I did before that to make it look a hell of a lot better than me just putting on my status, looking for this person, I used Canva. I think it was like 10 bucks a month back then. It's probably still the same. There's probably a cheaper free version. And I just made a one pager, job opportunity, high level overview of the, the job, contact information. And I just had everybody share those things back then. And that worked really well because LinkedIn was all about business, yeah. right? I've never used it to sell anything or it's never brought me any leads, but it has brought me decent candidates for employment. Yeah. So LinkedIn's easy. Of course, Facebook and Instagram, depending on your age bracket of where you are and where all your people are. Um, but I would just say, if you're going to go that route, spend a little bit of time, make a nice one pager and make it presentable and, uh, and utilize it like that. And then when you get to a place where you can spend, I think, Wise hires like a hundred bucks a month. Two hundred um, bucks a month. Shit. Yeah, something like that. And and the disc assessment itself will save you millions. Yeah. Over time, right? Because it's going to eliminate the people. And let's talk about that. What is a disc assessment, right? The disc it, basically telling you the characteristics of how they work, where they work, how they're taught, how they react to certain things, the personality. Well, it, even it breaks down. Yeah, there's it shows you what for let's say a sales role, right? And wise hire, it actually shows you, hey, if it's if you're a hunter versus a farmer, right? The farmer is good for clients that are existing or people that are just coming in the door, they may just need a couple of questions answered and uh, that's it, right? The hunter, the hunter is the guy that's going out and generating business, right? So depending on how you post your job and what keywords you have, it'll look at it as, all right, is this really a hunter or is this a farmer? And they'll show you where their disc profile score should be at a minimum to be an excellent fit in the role, a good fit in the role, an okay fit in the role. And then they will report that back to you. All right. So I would not hire anybody that is not. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that has not done that. And that's just setting up wise hire the right way. And if their profiles don't match, you can actually take their application and have it. If you, let's just say you have multiple jobs, you can actually take their application and see how it would fit and plug into other roles. So if you like the person, let's say you have a conversation, you didn't look at the disc profile, all right, and now all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, his profile doesn't match a hunter, but you know what? We're hiring for farmers over here you can actually run him through without him taking the test again. And they'll come up and say, all right, he's an excellent fit for this role. Or maybe he's an excellent fit for, um, you know, operations. But you can do that with one application go and, and three or four job posts. So if you really like someone, there's a way to find the right seat on the bus for him based on that test. All right. But if you don't do it the right way and you don't set up everything that we discussed before, it's going to be very hard for you guys to pull that off. All right. Next yeah. to impossible. And then you're just guessing at shit. And the worst, there is very few times I would actually say, don't do a trial and error. And it's hiring because here's the deal. If you hire the wrong person, the best case scenario is you are out whatever you had to pay them until you fired them. Okay. But the worst case scenario, I don't even want to go into. Okay. I hired one person that to this day was a complete fucking idiot. And not only did she uh, tank the company and companies intentionally, but after she did that, she's still a headache. She still spreads nasty rumors because she made something personal that wasn't, all right? So all it takes is one hire to make your life a living hell, all right? So if you do these things and you put the right things in place, you're gonna make your own life a lot easier and more importantly you're going to save so much headache down the line avoiding fucking landmines you'd step on when you hire the wrong person and if anyone has operated a business for more than 18 months two years all right you know you've done this or you've had one that you thought about and you're like oh my god why won't this person just quit i don't know how to fire them i don't want a lawsuit i don't want this i don't want that trust me when i tell you this is not trial and error is not a good strategy for hiring. 
Okay, you want to hire slow, fire fast, and even then, it doesn't doesn't have you dodge all the landmines. So these are things that you have to consider. Take it for someone that stepped on enough of them. Two. It's 2023, right? I literally paid a towing ticket this morning from a business that I sold in 2011. Yeah. And the guy never moved the vehicle out of my fucking personal name. So it's still registered to me and they just parked it and left it there for years. Stop. So, so here, these things come back to bite you. Yeah. I had to pay $200 today. The guy's like, listen, man, I st- I'll charge you 50 bucks a day, or you can just pay this 200 and forfeit the truck to us. I haven't seen the truck since 20, probably 2012. I'm like, dude, I have no idea what the truck looks like. It could be fucking a hot rod worth $300,000. I don't know, but take it, keep it. Here's your $200. It's a learning lesson for me. I hired the wrong damn people back in the day for a different company and it yeah. still comes back. So to your point, that's just a small thing that could come back and haunt you, right? I mean, imagine if that shit got towed in 2012 and they were just racking up fucking interest and compounding my, could have been $300,000 bill. Yeah. But you got to, to your point, like you've got to, you got to step in, you got to put all the right blocks in place so that you can protect yourself and execute hiring the right level, the right time with the right tools. So if if I can leave you with one thing, it's don't shortchange yourself when you're hiring. Also, don't overanalyze the cost because the idea behind it is if that person should generate one and a half to two times their salary, and that might just be time, time back to you so that you can go out as the CEO and continue selling and producing and meeting more and bigger people as prospects. But the idea is like, you're going to triple up on that. You're going to make the money back times two, three, four. Uh, but that's really on the CEO to determine. Yeah. Right? If you get slack ass and lazy, you ain't going to make shit. If you use that time wisely and get out there and, and hustle as the CEO, right? Because yeah. the hustle itself never dies, but the hustler has to die. Yeah. So you become the CEO. Once you learn how to be the CEO, you can start hustling again. Yeah. You're just hustling in just two avenues growth and sales that's it that's your only two jobs i love it guys we're going to end at that because it doesn't get any better than that i hope this helped you i'm sure it did do us a favor leave us a review share this with someone that needs to hear it that's the only way we're going to get this out we do it for absolutely free always share these episodes we greatly appreciate it and we will catch you on the next one see you all right